Hello, this is a gross specimen of a thyroid gland and this has been sectioned coronally so that we are looking at the cut surface. Let me just turn this around and when we look posteriorly, this is the left lobe, the isthmus and the right lobe and it has a lobulated outline. The cut surface shows multiple nodules involving both lobes and they are of different sizes. Some of the nodules have darker areas of hemorrhage and other nodules are paler in colour and in some areas you can see this brownish colour. This is because uh, there is abundant colloid within enlarged dilated follicles. This is an example of multinodular goiter. In multinodular goiter, the reason why there are multiple nodules involving most of the thyroid parenchyma is because there is hyperplasia and hypertrophy of the follicular cells and this is usually due to stimulation by TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, as a result of impaired thyroid hormone synthesis. The commonest cause of this is actually iodine deficiency. So microscopically, we would see uh, multiple nodules for example, you can see that there is a vague nodule here that is not encapsulated. So within each nodule, we will see multiple follicles. Some of the follicles are very large, as you can see here, and contain abundant colloid. Uh, other follicles are smaller, and the lining epithelium can be cuboidal, as we see here, or it can also be a little bit more hyperplastic meaning that the cells are more columnar. So we have different follicles, some of them are more hyperplastic, some of them are more involuted with more atrophied or flattened epithelium because they are undergoing hyperplasia and involution at different rates and this is why the gland grossly has a nodular appearance. Clinically, these patients may actually present with one nodule that the patient may have palpated uh, and then when imaging is performed, you actually see that the gland has multiple nodules. So sometimes the dominant nodule is the one that is noticed by the patient. And if these goiters get very large, they can actually give rise to compressive symptoms. So in summary, this is an example of multinodular goiter where the entire thyroid gland is enlarged and it is involved by multiple nodules of different sizes, some with areas of hemorrhage, and it's not seen here, but some other nodules can also undergo cystic change. This is a benign condition, and it is due to impaired thyroid hormone synthesis.